There are new claims that the Yorkshire Ripper, one of uh, the UK's most notorious serial killers, could be responsible for the murder of uh, several other women, many women uh, who have never before been connected to the killer, seven of whom are in London, or from London, please excuse me. Uh, Peter Sutcliffe brutally killed 13 women during the 1970s, but now a retired police officer says he's researched a new picture which he believes demonstrates the hallmarks of a Ripper killing. The family of one of the victims is now calling on the police co to consider the possibility of Sutcliffe's involvement. Well, BBC London's Jim Weeble has been following this story. How did this all come about then, Jim? Uh, well, this is really the work of this retired police officer called Chris Clark, who has been researching unsolved murders in his retirement, something that he's been doing. He calls himself the armchair detective. And came up with a list of 17 murders through his research. He's worked, incidentally, with the Norfolk Police. It was involved in uh, drawing links between crimes. That was kind of what his uh, professional background was. Um, anyway, he came up uh, with this list of, of unsolved murders, uh, which had a lot of hallmarks of uh, a ripper killing. Uh, it involved various gruesome details, which you won't go into right now on the radio, but uh, classic signs. And the breakthrough really came from, for him when he read a book called Somebody's Husband, Somebody's Son, uh, which essentially gives a picture of the life, the family life, and the friends of Peter Sutcliffe, uh, written by a chap called Gordon Burns. And the key element to that was it traced movements of Peter Sutcliffe um, which had never been uh, sort of known before this book was written which actually placed him in areas where these 17 unsolved murders um, occurred and the example being uh, there were several murders around the Hounslow area in the in the 70s and Peter Sutcliffe would often go to Alperton uh, over in West London during the early 70s. It was where his wife-to-be was being a trainee teacher and that pattern, that movement of his uh, suddenly linked him to these other uh, unsolved murders or, or, or some of them. So that gives you kind of an idea of how this, this sort of thing has, has been Layered. Yeah, I mean, we're getting an idea, certainly, that w at least one of the families wants the case reopened. Yeah, and that was uh, a really uh, a quite an interesting breakthrough because um, through his research and a couple of lo local paper articles, he's managed to, uh, the retired police officer, Chris Clark, has managed to get in touch with some family members. Now, only family members can order pathology reports for a, a deceased you know, family member. That's what this particular family did um, of a murdered woman called Gloria Booth, who was murdered in 1971. The pathologist report came back, and uh, Chris Clark looked at this report, and it had clear indications of uh, a similar pattern to previous Ripper murders. There were bite marks on the body, for instance. Um, another thing that was interesting was the pathologist reported there were two bruises around the throat, uh, which indicated uh, the use of a ligature. Peter Sutcliffe was arrested with a ligature at the time. A piece of rope with two knots in use to strangle. Um, and there were other elements as well that started to uh, build this picture. Um, someone else got in touch and mentioned that um, during the time they remember police investigating this particular crime in the early 70s, talking about um, asking people if they uh, uh, had seen someone um, with a gap in their teeth. Peter Sutcliffe had a gap in his teeth and linked to the bite marks on this particular body. So and that was new information that hadn't really come out before other than when uh, Chris Clark started looking into this. As a result of that, the family have now asked the Met Police to have a closer look at this particular crime and the Met Police have actually told us that the files always remain open. Um, they've been uh, looking at this particular murder since 2010 when they were carried out some more forensic tests. They do however say that they don't believe that this murder is linked to historic cases but it's certainly a picture that has been uh, build, built up by Chris Clark.
It's, it's really interesting. I'm just wondering where we go from here. If they, uh, maybe I'm watching too much telly, and you know, when they go and they uh, they see cold cases and the like, if the Met Police say, well, look, you know, the, the file is still open, but we don't believe there is a link. Where do we go from here? Well, the the, the thing is it, that that is essentially um, the problem because without evidence which could effectively result in a uh, in a conviction it's very difficult to take the case forward so what i think the idea is that uh, with more uh, local stories in local papers for uh, this particular uh, person chris clark carrying on his his, his his sort of quest really to find more people who are related to victims to come forward and to um, uh, all the pathology reports that can be looked at again, a picture will potentially emerge where there might be enough of a uh, force to suggest that another look should be had at these particular inquiries. Really fascinating. Jim Weaver with that report, one imagines as a former detective he would have been able to pull some strings that will bring you more on that. Of course, you'll all remember if you've lived in London for a while, Peter Sutcliffe brutally uh, murdering 13 women during the 1970s. Uh, and if uh, this uh, armchair detective is right, uh, that number could be a great deal higher.